What's up, YouTube? Back at you with another video. Uh, we're here with episode seven of Bel Air. Woo! All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the elephant in the room. First of all, in episode six, I seen Michael Ely there sniffing around um, and Vivian and shit like that. Now, my thing is, anytime you see Michael Ely in a room with a woman, it, red flag, immediate red flag. Now, Uncle Phil was smart to pretty much say, all right, yo, Jeffrey, you know, keep a watch on that guy. Now, in the first recap, I had nothing but wonderful things to say about Aunt Viv. I thought that she was, you know, the most attractive woman on the show. She was number one on my list that every single time I would watch Bel Air, it would be to see her. This woman absolutely let me down. She let me down like it just goes to show that you could be a good man, successful. You're there for your kids. You're there for your wife. And then still your wife will come around and say, oh, you know, what the hell did she say? She was like, uh, uh, oh, you were supposed to rescue me 15 years ago. It's like minor fucking details because you could have you could have told me this before you went to go sneak and have 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 freaking secret rendezvous and shit with motherfucker Michael Ely. It's like Michael Ely is not even portraying a character. He's just being himself. This is just the type of guy that he is. In every single movie that he's done, and not even to bring color into this, but I'm just going to have to do it. There's always a dark-skinned nice guy who's trying to get a certain woman, and then Michael Ely comes into the equation to try to screw it all up. All right? And I was like, yo, you know, I tweeted this shit. The minute I saw this dude and I seen the context and everything, I was like, yo, you better watch out. For Michael Ely, <laughs> like, don't leave your girl in the room with Michael Ely alone because you know what she said? She had the audacity, the audacity. Now, mind you, all of that money that they have that supports their lifestyle and all of that stuff, that shit don't come from you know Vivian. It comes from Uncle Phil. So when he was like, "Yo, I took the money out of my account," she's like, "Oh, it's your account now." Well, shit, it's his money. He's a politician. You're an artist, and if not like some sort of stay-at-home mom, like you, you don't do anything. You don't do anything. So he finances your whole entire lifestyle. This woman had the nerve to say, oh, um, oh, he just makes me feel alive. Like, yo, once a woman says that shit to you while you guys are still in a relationship about another man that she enjoys his company so much, you gotta let her go. She gotta go. She gotta go. And mind you, he didn't even know initially that she was going to go to meet up with him in the first place. Jeffrey had to go and tell him that he was like, yeah, you know, um, whatever. He handed him the envelope or, or the, the folder and shit like that. And then he looked in it and then he seen the little itinerary and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And then he had to pull up. And then even then he was like, yo, you know, you know, we could, we could, um, I could, I could put her in a spa for the day. We could spend some quality time together. Let's do this. Let's do that. Trying to make amends, trying to you know, make things right with her. And it's just like, yo, she, she's too far gone. The original Aunt Viv could never. The new Aunt Viv could never. I don't know what's up with this one where she wanna be all out and about all over the place, but pretty much, if Michael Ely is spending time with your girl, you just gotta let her go, I guess. Long story short, I feel betrayed by Aunt Viv. In fact, I was speechless because I thought, you know, with him offering these certain things and trying to, you know, um, connect with her that she was gonna come around and then she said I'm gonna save myself this time and then she went back out with Michael Ely all I know is all I know is if I was on if I was Phil I would have been like go out with him but I won't be here for you when you get back so when she gets back home and all that all the other types of stuff all her shit will be packed up outside all her shit will be packed up outside because when it comes to Michael Ely, anything can happen. I don't know what his name is on this show. I, I don't even care. But to me, all I see is Michael Ely because he's always taking these types of roles all the time. So he's doing what he's always done. You cannot trust Michael Ely, period, period. So Ann Viv, canceled, canceled. Ann Viv is officially canceled. She used to be my number one character, like, or at least my number one woman on this show because it used to be Ann Viv, then Hillary, then Lisa, that, that's that's over. Them days is over. I don't like Ann Viv because th this is my thing. You cannot betray and and 
Like you cannot betray a good man. Put it like this. Michael Ely, from what Jeffrey said, he was like, yo, like this dude's got a reputation. And then when she pulled up, he was already surrounded by like four or five different girls. So she's nothing special to him. She's just another conquest. He just wants to see like, all right, yo, can I really take, you know, another man's wife from him? And clearly it's working because all he's doing is just playing the nice guy route. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to pretty much fill in all the gaps that that your man's not doing, because whatever it is that she sees in Michael Ely, all of his strengths, quote unquote, are predicated on Uncle Phil's weaknesses. So meaning Uncle Phil, you know, does a lot for her. But yet it's like he, he can never do enough. There's, there's always something that she's not getting or whatever it is she feels like she's not getting from Uncle Phil. She's going to go and try to get that shit from Michael Ely. And that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Honestly, the way that they send a good message to to women watching Bel Air, don't don't disrespect a real man. Don't disrespect a good man. And then if you do, when you go back home, all your shit will be outside, packed up, ready to go. I would have been like, you know, Jeffrey, um, just load up all her stuff in the car. So when she comes home, she got to get out of here. I'll pay for her hotel for the night, but she's not staying here no more. And when the kids ask, I'd be like, you know what? You know, things <laughs> things don't always go the way that you plan. And then that would have been it. I would have been like, no more questions. No more questions. So, Aunt Viv, I'm very deeply hurt, disappointed. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I feel like Stephen A. Smith. I'm a bit sad. Actually, I'm lying. I'm quite devastated. You know, Aunt Viv, she got to go. She's canceled. I'm done with Aunt Viv. It's over. It's over. Next. The first episode, well, the first, you know, one to two, first couple episodes, I didn't think much of Hillary for some reason. Like, she just, you know, and I think maybe it was because I just had my certain expectations for her character. So I was kind of looking at her just through the lens of Hillary and what her role was going to be moving forward so i didn't really get a chance to actually like scan the actress her herself when i tell you hillary she's bad hillary is bad she's just she's just freaking gorgeous right now honestly i i could care less about her character to an extent right so her and jazz got their little thing going and mind you jazz is probably like a good five foot four maybe five foot five on a on a good day but he's he's pretty swaggy you know what i'm saying and hillary she's just content creator media girl whatever and in long story short basically these guys that i guess she works with they took a video that she made and then they twisted it up to make it seem mad provocative and, and promiscuous and all of that shit because she was you know wearing lingerie and then just because the guy who ultimately did it pretty much dangled a better deal and like $15,000 per post in her face, pretty much whatever it is that she was mad about pretty much went out the window. That like all of these girls on this show, except for Lisa, are all acting up and are all out and about. And I didn't even really like Jazz, but it's like, I can't help but agree with him where he was like, yo, like, I didn't think you would, you know, compromise your morals like that. I didn't think, you know, you would sell out. I didn't think you would sell your soul. You know what I'm saying? And then she want to get mad at him. It's like, yo, the reason why I even feel like that is because I think more of you. Don't don't get mad at me because I'm holding you to a higher standard. Shit, you don't. Clearly, it's like it's like Uncle Phil is almost her dad for no reason. It's like you, Uncle Phil is your father, strong black man, and then you you just out here carrying yourself like just just any random random thought. It's like she was like, oh, this video's thotty, but then now she's okay with it because they're giving her bread. So it's like, what else would you do for more money? So it's like, yeah, the the actress that plays her is bad. But like her character is just despicable. It's like, yo, like you, like I would have respected her. She was like, you know what? Nah, just take it down. And then, you know, whatever. But in order for, I'll, I'll maintain my morals, you know, my own way, but I'm not going to do it by compromising myself and stuff like that. So, you know, um, because I figured I was like, yo, you know, Hillary, she need a tall guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm six foot four. You know what I mean? I'm black. You know what I'm saying? I got a good hairline, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? But, but <laughs> anyway. So that's Hillary. I feel like Hillary, she needs to do better. Hillary definitely needs to do better. Um, Carlton. Carlton is still my least favorite character on the show. And the reason why is because it's like for every step forward that he takes in terms of character development, this dude takes three steps back, right? So granted, he starts going in, he's, he, 
he starts to have problems with his circle, which is all the white boys. You know, pretty much everybody that's not black in that school. And they have a falling out, you know what I'm saying? And then once I started to see Carlton and Will start to click up, I was like, okay, all right, Carlton's coming back to black. Carlton's black again, or he's he's getting there. You know, Carlton is 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 coming around, and I was like, cool, because I like to see Will and Carlton's character bond because I know eventually at some point they're going to become like brothers, but it's just taking a while because Carlton is always screwing up. Like this guy is just an emotional train wreck. He's a drug addict. He's a crackhead. He's a base head. He's a coon. He's like everything that could be wrong with a black man in 2022. That's Carlton right there. And in fact, you know, Carlton took it some type of way when the black girl that will try to set him up with pretty much called him out on his BS. She was like, yo, like, this is who you are like or this is what we think you are based off of how you present yourself and he want to get mad but then he s redeemed himself by pretty much confronting that punk ass you know white boy and shit and he was just like yo all right you know we could be cool if you're gonna apologize for all the things that you know you said and did not just about me but about everybody and the motherfucker you know couldn't do it and that just goes to show that you are who you associate with so carlton you know what I'm saying is an asshole by association by association you see what i'm saying because all his friends you know are, are are racist dickheads so then that just makes him one of them you know what i'm saying because what did what did connor end up doing connor ended up calling the cops after he got kicked out the party it's just like yo like come on bro and carlton just won't seem to let go of lisa which you know i'll get to um in a minute he just won't seem to let her go and i understand you know you have you have a relationship with your girl things don't go well you guys break up obviously women you know move on you know 10 times faster than men do she already forgot that they were even together in the first place especially you know with will there you know what I'm saying the swaggier taller dude of course she's gonna go with the taller guy you know what i'm saying and he just keep he just keeps you know creeping around now the thing is if i was will I would have just told him straight up. I would have been like, well, not quite. Carlton still doesn't know about us. Yo, me and Lisa are a thing now. And then if you don't like it, I'll beat your ass. You know what I'm saying? Or I'll fuck you up. Like, I, it just, just, it's just what it is. <laughs> and then that's it. Carlton not going to do nothing. He's too small. <laughs> Carlton's too small. Carlton can't do nothing anyway. So it's like, I don't know why they were so apprehensive about it. Because needless to say, it's like, regardless of how he felt, about it even when he really tried to split them up and said oh stay away from lisa they still gravitated towards one another anyway so it's just like hey just rip sometimes in life you just gotta rip the band-aid off so he might not like it it might sting a little bit but hey at least you got it off and then you could just you know move on you don't have to worry about it anymore because the longer you it, it's like it hurts more when you when you try to peel it off and then and then just do it like the slower rather than just just ripping it off so i think carlton is going to um you know he's gonna bitch and complain about it you know like he always does you know he's carlton's gonna do what carlton does carlton's probably gonna go back to his one true love the crack pipe you know what i'm saying the xanax line you know whatever you know assortment uh, uh, whatever assortments of drugs and paraphernalia that you know he he uses in times like this but then i think eventually he's just gonna be like oh you know she's not my girl anymore and then the other girl that he was talking to they're gonna you know click up again because i feel like they make a better couple than 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 uh carlton and, and freaking lisa first of all lisa's taller than him like i don't know what's up with this show and pairing the 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 beautiful tall girls with like these sub five foot five you know like dudes like I, I don't know it's like yo get a tall dude for that that's why I, like i said i respect will because he's tall you know what I'm saying you gotta like it's like no wonder lisa don't want to be with carlton because she can't even wear heels around you because it's like not only are you already short she wears sneakers you're already short and then if she puts on heels she's gonna be like five foot nine and then you just gonna be all down there she gotta like bend down to kiss you she probably gotta pick you up like when you guys go to the grocery store she gotta put you in the in, in the baby seat in the in the freaking you know what i'm saying the grocery store and then push you around like i don't know it just it just sucks to be carlton it sucks to be jazz and it would suck to be a dude that's not six foot feet you know what i'm saying that's not six feet um so that's carlton will 
I mean, there's not a lot I can say about Will. I feel like Jabari Banks, it just, he's just doing, uh, Jabari Banks is doing a phenomenal job on the show. Um, I love watching him. He's very inspiring. He does his thing. Like, this, like everything. Like, I have no critiques about his character. I have no critiques about his acting skills. Jabari Banks is just doing his thing. So, Jabari, <laughs> keep doing your thing, bro. Lisa. Now, I take back what I said, and I don't really take back the things that I say a lot. Um, basically, in my first recap, I said that Lisa was the least attractive girl on the show, right? But, I, you know, she was just looking, looking mad good to me lately. Like, I've just been seeing her in these episodes, and just the way that she smiles, her hair, her skin, just the, just the way that she looks, she carries herself, she's very caring. You know, she's just she's just been, you know, turning me on, you know what I'm saying? And so now, basically, my ranking for the women of Bel Air now, the leaderboard is Lisa's number one, Hillary's number two, and I would say, you know, uh, Vivian is number three, but I'm gonna make her number ten, even though three through three through nine are empty slots because Vivian, she's a cheater, she's she's a harlot, she's promiscuous, she's scandalous. Vivian can go. <laughs> Vivian can go, um, but you know I, I like I like how you know uh, Lisa she's just she's just a good girl you know what I'm saying and that's all you know dudes ever really want is a girl like that you know what I mean is a girl like that that just has morals she carries herself I mean yeah Carlton you know was her ex but you know he's five foot two you know what I'm saying he's five foot three I mean she can't do nothing with that so we'll come in the spot probably a good you know six six feet six one I don't know how tall he is. And then, you know, she just gets with him, and then they're just a better fit. They just have a better relationship, and then it just works out like that. Um, and, yo, the way... So they had their little love scene and stuff like that, you know, in the bedroom. And uh, when I tell you, the way that Lisa just sat on that bed, and she was just ready to go, I was just... Woo! Yeah, I was. I had to get up, you know. I, you know what I'm saying? You know, Lisa. She's just. She's just a sight for sore eyes. She's just. She's just good. Oh, and I will say, uh, Jeffrey. Every dude in this life, it's essential that you have a right hand man that looks out for you, that has your back, like Jeffrey does for Uncle Phil. I'm talking about. He's like, yo, um, yo, watch out for him. He's like, got it. Yo, Jeffrey, I need you to do this. Got it. Jeffrey, um, I need you to do that. Got it. Like, he is the perfect lieutenant, underboss, right-hand man, whatever you want to call it. I can only aspire to have a friend or an assistant as on point as Jeffrey. I don't. And, and the thing is, we still don't even really know about their relationship yet. So I feel like that's one of the things that I'm still waiting to find out is their backstory. Because... In the original Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and I'm only bringing this up for the sake of comparison, Jeffrey in the original was what you see is what you get. Like there wasn't a whole lot to to, to Jeffrey really, but this one, obviously, you know, Mr. James Bond, there's layers to this guy, and obviously Uncle Phil and Jeffrey have a relationship that we don't know much about yet. But I'm I'm curious and interested to see um, what their actual backstory and history is. Um, I look forward to seeing episode eight. I've been very much so enjoying Bel Air uh, at this point. This is one of the episodes that I had to do a recap to because I think this episode was probably the most lit out of all of them. And uh, yeah, so uh, that, those are my thoughts. Uh, if you want more content like this on the channel, uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Good luck.